<laughs> he won. Top score. Mr. Davis, hey, look. Hey, what do you say there, Pop? 20 to 1. Pretty sharp, huh? Ah, how do you like that? A stranger, huh? I'll do it again, mister. I'll give you a free soda. Soda? He does it again, he gets two bucks. What, are you trying to kid me? Pay up. Money? This is not for gambling. There's a law. Oh, now, don't give me the law stuff. 20 to 1, you pay the kids when they win, don't you? This is a pinball. That's all it is. Mister, it's a pinball. Do you live around here? Now, well, then, you should know this is a candy store. It's not a gambling house. You want to gamble? Take a plane and go to Las Vegas. Come on, Ernie, let's go. No, oh, no. Nobody chisels me. What's the matter, mister? Are you a troublemaker? No trouble, just pay up. Hey, what's the, uh, what's going on here, huh? Dave, tell him. Just because he wins, he thinks we are running a gambling joint. It's against the law, mister. Tell him, Dave. Yeah. Officer, tell me. Are they paying off or aren't they? Go ahead. Tell him to get out and stop making trouble here. Come on, this is a candy store. What else? On your way. All right, officer. Well, it's Dave, come on in. You're up early. What were you doing in Pop Davis's yesterday? Checking up on me? You want a cup of coffee? I want an answer, Ernie. What are you so steamed up for if you don't feel the heat? Because I feel a fire on my back, that's why. You walking in there like that. Yeah, tell me, officer. Are they paying off or aren't they? Some actor. I'm not checking up on you. No? What were you doing then, taking the census? I was checking a gambling violation. What? Gambling? In Davis's? Yeah, pinball. Cash payoff. <laughs> pinball? Funny, huh? You know as well as I do where a fat trail of nickels can lead. I thought sure it was me that you were checking up on. Davis is paying off in cash, isn't he? I never saw anything like that. Uh, come on now, Dave. Ernie, those are nice old people I've known for years. Yeah, but a cash payoff. You can't prove that by me. Yeah, well, I'm not trying to. I'm not checking up on you. So now, how about a cup of coffee? Thanks, but I've got to go on duty. Ernie, that's just a little candy store, Davis's. A nothing. Forget it. Candy store. You know better than that. So do I. And so does that patrolman friend of yours. Yeah, we going home now, Dan? Say, what about that friend of yours? Listen, you want to check into Dave Robbins, you check. You're the confidential squad, the shoe fly. Well, any rotten apples, it's not my business. You think he's rotten? Or maybe that candy store is clean. Maybe they don't pay off. No, they didn't this afternoon. All right, they probably do. And Robbins, the cop on the beat, right under his nose, he doesn't even know it. Pinball. It's penny ante. Ernie, it's gambling. I don't care whether it's for peanuts or a real wad. It's against the law. Look it up. Ernie, that man I just showed out, Arlen, he's a junior high school principal. His school is uh, two, two blocks from the candy store. He made that complaint? Well, you heard part of it. It was bounced to the commissioner and then on to me. Arlen is complaining that his kids are losing their lunch money. There are four candy stores near his school, all of them with pinball machines. See, the kids go there during the noon recess. Whatever they have, they gamble away. Great habit for the future. So don't give me any of that penny ante stuff. You gonna check up on it? If Robbins is involved, I have to. He never turned in the place of suspected premises. Uh, Dave Robbins wouldn't... Ernie, the... 
Honey, you stick to your job, and I'll stick to mine, eh? Oh, you scratched it. I'm sorry, Anseel. You're not sorry at all. My favorite, too. I'll give you another one. On what you make? Why did he have to be a cop? There's better ways to make a living. Easier, too. Well, I've won more on bingo. Or the horses. <laughs> once I got 80 to one. Uh, only once? Well, you can't be lucky all the time. I like bingo better, though. It's more friendly. Yeah, you know that, uh, that pinball there? That's a friendly bet. All right, Ernie, lay off, will you? What's the matter? Nothing's the matter, Anseel. It's okay. Well, uh, did I say anything I should? No. Mr. Brenner is just leaving. Oh. Um, I, uh, I've got to straighten up in the kitchen. I forgot all about it. Did you... You went to the police academy with Dave, hmm? That's right. Well, you must drop in again sometime. Come to dinner. Thank you. What do you mean, lay off? Uh -huh. Lay off what? You're not the snooper. That's your old man's job. I just dropped in. Oh, look, don't give me that. And no lectures. I already got chewed out by the sergeant. What for? Everything. First he tells me I'm too tough, then he tells me I'm not tough enough. Everybody saw at me. Like, you know, the grocer down the street? He had to move his crates. He blames me. That's your job. Makes my guts ache. Like the candy store? Look, Ernie, they're my neighbors. I lived here all my life. I, I used to go to that candy store when I was a kid. What am I supposed to do, hit them over the head? Now, Dave, I'm not the one who's checking up. Not now, anyway. Your father? Listen, I asked you a question. Suspected premises. You have a working knowledge of the meaning of that term, haven't you, Robbins? Any premises upon which suspicion... The Davis store should be suspected premises. You never reported it, so why? Well, uh, there was no reason to, sir. They have a pinball machine and kids with nickels. They play for what? Free sodas? I guess they do. Maybe back in 1903 they did. Now they hit, they get coin of the realm. That's why they play, why they lose, and why they go without lunch. I... I never saw money paid off, sir. You never looked, you mean. You were uh, born and brought up in that neighborhood, weren't you, Robbins? That's right. You well liked there? I guess I am. So now you're being a good neighborhood boy and helping old Pop Davis a little bit when he's being hit with a two-bit rap, huh? No, that's not it. I just never saw him pay off in cash. But we both know he does, don't we? I don't know that, sir. You're just protecting him. Or maybe you're playing ball with a syndicate lice who he shares nickels with. No, I'm not. I'll find out, Robbins. Whatever it is, I'll find out. Hello, anybody around? Coming right in. Yes, what do you want? I'm Lieutenant Brenner from the police commissioner's office. I'm looking for Mr. Davis. Oh, well, he's away just now. Uh, when will he be back? I think I'm a fortune teller. He went to a large meeting. I suppose he'll be back home late. Ah. Well, I'll come by tomorrow. I'm Mrs. Davis. I'm the wife. Can I do something for you? No, in the morning you'll be fine, Mrs. Davis. And I can talk to you both. Thank you. To both? All right. What are you going to tell him? Tell him what? Mrs. Davis, he's after me. You? Why, you... Because of the pinball machine. Oh, that pinball machine. I wish we'd never have it. Look, you can't tell him. I mean, maybe that I, I come in here, I use this back room for a smoke or a cup of coffee. That's okay. But I don't know anything about gambling. That's not up to me. 
Papa decides. He's got to keep his mouth shut. I'll be transferred and get a complaint too. Now you keep quiet, you understand that? The both of you. When will he be home? Not until late tonight. You don't have to come back. I'll, uh, I'll tell him you were here. Didn't you hear it? Over and over, over and over? Never mind the button. How do I know how long I'll be wearing? Dave, where are you going? Uh, I'm going out. It's so late, almost midnight. Where are you going? Will you quit with the questions? Just lay off me, will you please? <laughs> I couldn't see. I already told the officer who came here last night. You were here yesterday. You are a cop like Dave Robbins. That's right. Take it easy, Pop. Excuse me. I'm Lieutenant Brenner from headquarters. One question, Mr. Davis. The man who hit you, how tall was he? Tall? My height, his. How about Dave Robbins? You know how tall he is. Oh, Lieutenant, I don't know anything. Did you do it? No, sir, why should I? Because we were breathing down your neck. You said there wasn't any gambling. I never saw any. Hello, Captain. What do you say, Roy? Tell you a story? Not quite. Come on, Robbins, you might as well. No, sir. You want to put me under oath? I'll say the same thing. I've known Pop Davis for years. You think I could... What for? To shut him up. Robbins, I'm giving you a complaint. The rest is up to the trial commissioner. That shoe fly, he did it. I, uh... Boy, every time he gets somebody, he builds up his score and makes a record. I said lay off. Let go. Well, you've got to have somebody to blame, so you pick on my father, huh? If you'd done your job right, you wouldn't have a thing to worry about. Listen, he thinks I put the arm on Pop Davis. Did you? No! All right, Ernie. I knew Pop was paying off on pinball. But I had to let it ride. Can't you see that? I mean, that's my block. Everybody there knows me. They knew my mother and my father. If I had turned Pop in, everybody would know, and then what would I be? Maybe a little less well-liked. Ernie, it was just pinball, I figured. Well, did you ever think you figured wrong, maybe? Maybe. But there it was. I knew if Pop talked to your father, I'd be in a real jam. I left the house last night. I was worried sick. I walked around, and then, then I decided to go to Pop and tell him that the both of us ought to tell the truth. I got a few blocks away, and then I thought about the mess I'd be in with everybody, and I, I just turned right around and I went home. Suppose I believe you. Ernie, it's the truth. All right, it's the truth. Who beat up the old man? Come on, you should know it's your beat. You must know who goes in and out of that store. Must be some crumb with a strong arm. Are you still afraid you might offend the neighbors? No. Come on, I'll help you. 
We can dig around. Ernie, in the last few weeks, there have been a couple of guys going in and out of that place. Collections, I guess. Not neighborhood guys, but strong arm boys. But there was never any trouble, so I let them alone. It could be one of them. You remember them well enough to look at some mug shots? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Come on, Ernie. Let's try them now. Right now. And more assault cases back here. Hey. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This monkey I've seen someplace. Someplace. What's his name? Philly Logan. 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 Logan, no, the name doesn't hit Ernie, but that face sure does. See what they got on his yellow sheet. Oh, this is Brennan, 9th Division. What have you got on B674235? Yeah, hold. Sure. It could be him. I remember he brushed past me once coming out of the candy store. He was carrying a small suitcase and it jingled. And, uh... I looked at him, and then Pop came out, and they started to talk. Yeah, that's right, Logan. Assault and battery. Another assault. Gun charge. What's that? Thank you, that'll do it. That last item was attempted extortion in connection with a pinball machine operation. Logan, huh? If we get Pop Davis to identify him, we're home free. He scared the old man a lot. Yeah, well, maybe he'll talk to you anyway. After all, you are his friend, aren't you? Well? Come on, tell me. Come on, tell me, will you? I'm a friend of yours. I have no friends. Pop, do you know they think I did it? What are you saying? They can't. Well, it was dark. I didn't see. Look, Pop, I know most of the guys that come in here. Now, what about this here? Wasn't it Logan who cracked it? Come on, did you argue with him? Who was it, Pop? Was it Logan? So you're gonna pick him up, huh? Take my advice? Don't. Why, oh, it's him. Who says so? The old man didn't. Well, no, Dave Robbins says so. When we bring him in, Davis will identify him, and so will Mrs. Davis. Will they? Or will they say they never saw him before? And, um, how do you know that Robbins isn't lying? Why should he lie? To save his neck. Uh, what about this Logan? Any uh, previous convictions? Yeah, he's been in before. That's not enough. You bring him in without proof, he'll clam up. You'll get nothing from him. Uh, put a loose tail on him, follow him wherever he goes. Sooner or later, he'll move in on Davis again, or Robbins will. Are you still riding that horse? Forget it, will you? It's dead. It's not dead. He may get a departmental trial. Right, maybe he didn't do it. Maybe it is Logan. But if Robbins is tied in this much, if he's taking it, he'll never wear a badge again. Be around later. He didn't mention any special time? Not that I heard. He closed the door just then. I heard a name, though. Dave. Or it sounded like Dave. Dave. 
Could it have been Davis? Could have been either one. You need me anymore? I'm due back to cover his apartment house. No, thank you very much. Either one, Dave or Davis. Could be Dave Robbins or the old man. Well, at least we got one lead. Could be today or tonight. Could be the candy store. Shall we go in? No use waiting. He's a rock customer. Looks like you deal me in. Another member of the firm just arrived. We better let the meeting get underway for a few minutes. Then we'll move in and get the story one way or the other. Oh, hello, Mr. Davis. Oh, hello. Where's Pop? Huh? Oh, he's... He's taking a nap. How is he? Oh, he's fine. He's fine. He's just, uh... He's just tired. He's... I said, no, I don't want to talk to you anymore. All right, old man. The talking is now over. Oh, God! Oh, 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 Robbins, you can go. And did Logan tell you the truth? Davis did. Logan wanted to install one of his dime machines instead of a nickel one. Davis wanted no machine. The next step was gentle persuasion. I wish Papa told me sooner. Logan would have never gotten started. A rat like that. He got started because of you. Me? You, because you didn't do your job. You didn't keep Davis in line. Yes, sir. But uh, that kind of thing, Lieutenant, uh, everybody gambles. Sure. And the nickels and dimes funnel back and add up to $10 million. That's traffic, Robbins. Traffic, the hoods will do a lot to control. And you helped. The law is on the books for a reason. You enforce it. Yes, sir. One more thing, Robbins. I'm requesting that you be transferred. No man should have to walk a post in a neighborhood where he, where he wore short pants, where everybody expects him to be a regular fellow, and where, if he's decent, his instinct tells him to be regular. Yes, sir. I'm afraid it works out that a good cop can't be that to those he's policing. He can be fair, sure, honest, dependable, but he can never really be well-liked because he has to enforce too many unpopular laws. Now, if a man can't take that, he's better off turning in his shield. That's all, Robbins. So, you painted a pretty hard picture of departmental life. Hard? He wants to be a cop. Whoever said that was easy. Let's go home, son. <laughs> 